We just got to Blaine in Washington. We um, stopped at Starbucks. And then to fill up the car because we're on our way to Beaverton to pick up a puppy today. The border crossing agent laughed at us. <laughs> It's like you're driving 12 hours to pick up a dog. Yeah. We're doing it. We're long haul trip. We're making it. Now that he's challenged us, we can't let that be. True. You can't let him win. We have to make it back before his shift ends just to rub it in that it's possible. <laughs> We won't be driving like this the whole time, but we're in the suburbs. Look! Look at him! We'll navigator. Oh my gosh. Okay. You help me navigate. Okay, we okay. Alright, there you go. I gotta help daddy with maps. He's so cute. Oh, I just caught his new one on camera. No, no, no. He keeps trying to come up and I keep trying to tell him he's gotta stay down there. Travel like a good boy. Oh, he knows. <laughs> he tried to try, and then he was like, nah. Oh my gosh. Where is this thing? Am I turning left? if you don't already know me and if you do hey welcome back in today's video I'm going to be introducing you guys to someone very very special as you can see by the title of this video I'm gonna be introducing you to my my new puppy which is I still can't believe I can say it out loud but we have a brand new little boy in our house and I can't wait for you guys to meet him I was actually gonna film this video next weekend, but he has grown so much since we picked him up and I just don't want to wait any longer because by next weekend, he's basically gonna be an adult. But I wanna introduce you guys to him while he's still the teeny tiny puppy that I remember him as, that we picked him up as. So that is what we are doing today. And I'm gonna be not only introducing you to this new little guy, but I'm also gonna be telling you a little bit about 
what it's been like raising him in an apartment because it's definitely not easy. It's an added layer of challenge raising a little puppy in an apartment. And then I'm going to be talking a little bit about his breed as well since that was something that was requested on my Instagram when I asked you guys if there was anything else you wanted me to cover in this video. And I'm also going to be talking a little bit about our training approach for him. So this is our new puppy. Oh, he's a little squirmy. He just woke up from a nap. And his name is Mars. And he is a wind sprite. <laughs> he is um, teething a little bit right now, so he definitely has a habit of mouthing our hands. But as long as he's not nipping, then we're okay with that. But this is Mars. He is, I'm gonna, <laughs> he's like so little. Although he's gotten a lot bigger than when we first got him, but he's still so small and cute. We gave him a bath this morning. So he's had a big day because it's only his third ever bath. He totally just clocked me in the chin. I'm gonna have him in my lap or he might just choose to roam around. But he's gonna be right beside me down here throughout the video. So this is how big he is right now. So a little bit about Mars, we got him two weeks ago. He is three months old as of yesterday and he weighs a whopping 10.4 pounds. His breed is something that's really interesting. We get stopped all the time. People always wanna know what kind of dog he is because he has you know, the markings of one type of dog but the body of a different kind of dog so people aren't quite sure where to place him. A lot of people think he's a German Shepherd which makes sense with the markings. He's got the little brown eyebrows and the black face and when he lies on his back and his ears flop up, he totally looks like a Shepherd but he's actually a wind sprite. And a wind sprite is a Sheltie mixed with a Whippet. They used to be called long-haired Whippets, but from what I remember, the people who were breeding Whippets professionally weren't too pleased with that name, so they renamed them to wind sprite, I believe after the gentleman who created the crossbreed. So now they are known as wind sprites, and they've been their own breed for about 50 years. So. Mars's parents are both wind sprites and their parents were both wind sprites. I don't really know the full lineage, but he's a couple generations of wind sprite. But I know that somewhere at the top there was a combination of Sheltie and Whippet that got together to make this sweet little animal. The way that we found out about wind sprites is actually really interesting because we were we were wanting to get a dog. We live in an apartment, we live in a city. So we went through a lot of breeds to try and find the right one that would complement the environment that we were living in. My partner and I are both working professionals. We also live in a condo in downtown Vancouver. So we wanted an animal that could thrive and complement that environment. We considered a lot of different kinds of breeds from like border collies to Australian shepherds to um, I think it was like American Bull Mastiff to, what else did we consider? We looked at Poodles, Mini Poodles, which led us to Golden Doodles. We were really close to possibly getting a Mini Golden Doodle at one point. Another super cute breed that we looked at was the Duck Toller, but ultimately for our very first dog we decided we wanted a dog that was characteristically a good match for people who were looking to get a first dog. Like, what kind of dog is best for a first time dog owner? And there was a big long list and the one that we liked the most was the Whippet. So we were, we were on board with the Whippet, we were looking for breeders in Vancouver and Somehow going down like a deep rabbit hole on the internet, we came across the wind sprite. And I'm not too sure exactly how it happened, but you know when you get on the internet and you Google one thing and you're just like jumping from website to website, you end up on the fifth page of Google search and that's where things start to get a little weird, a little, a little distant from what your original search was. And that's where we found a website that was dedicated to wind sprites. And from there, we found a list of breeders. We found out they had a Facebook group. We joined the group. And within a few months, we heard about a breeder who was planning on having a litter. And that was back in early of uh, this year, 2019. So we connected with her and I think we found out that her dog was pregnant in March. So we immediately set our deposit in. Her dog gave birth, I believe in June. And 10 weeks later, we were driving down to Portland to pick up Mars. So what was interesting about the litter that Mars was born into is that there were three, no, there were five 
variations of tan pups, whether it was like a brindle tan or a full tan. And then there were two parti, which are like the white with spots. And Mars was the only one that came out looking at the way he does. So his coat is a little bit more on the uncommon side. In the Facebook group that we're in, we can only see, I think, two or three other dogs that have similar colorings to him and they grew up so handsome so we can't wait to see what he looks like as he grows up because when he was born he wasn't as dark as he is now and then apparently as he grows he might end up being less dark or more dark <laughs> they're really not too sure how he's going to turn out but we're so excited because he's going to be a handsome boy either way so that is the story of how we got mars and when we brought him home we had an x-pen waiting for him with a small crate and a bunch of toys so we have the x-pen we used to have it a lot larger but the breeder actually recommended that we make it a lot smaller so it feels more like a, uh, a den to him and accidents are less likely to happen when they are living in a smaller space so we made it as small as it is now and we've been experimenting making it a little bit bigger but he did recently have an accident when it was at its largest which like completely wasn't his fault so we went back to making it a little bit smaller until um, maybe he's a little bit older then we'll try again because accidents do happen he's still a puppy and that's totally fine it's just about figuring out where he's at in his development and how much he can handle because we want to set him up for success we started with crate training right away and what really helped us was putting a bone in the crate and then practicing with the door open closing the door letting him crawl out letting him go back in the whole idea was to make it the most positive experience that we could so we gave him a ton of treats when he was in the crate he got his bone while he was in the crate we tried to feed him a little bit in the crate as well just to have that positive association so we weren't cramming him in there and closing the door and making it a scary place we wanted it to be really happy and positive so he took to his crate pretty well okay so the first night with the puppy I want to talk about this because people always talk about the first night alone like there's a lot of different websites that advise you to take a lot of different actions when your dog is crying in his crate what we ended up doing with Mars was we closed the door to his crate and when he would whine we would take him outside so that he would associate whining with a bathroom break and we didn't want him whining and then getting rewarded with attention. So if we took him outside, it was always, you know, we didn't look at him, we didn't talk to him, we just carried him outside, put him on the ground, waited for a few minutes, and if he did his business, great, bring him back upstairs. And if he didn't, then we would just bring him back upstairs and put him back in his crate. So getting him back into the crate was a little bit of a challenge because he wasn't really wanting to go back in, which we thought was like pretty much on par with expected because it was still such a new concept to him. We did try, you know, getting him in there with treats. Um, what we had done was make it a really cozy space. So we padded it with blankets and then we had blankets like all around so it ended up being really cozy but what we didn't realize or maybe if you're a new puppy parent or you're thinking about being a new puppy parent this is something that can hopefully help you but what we didn't realize is that we were actually making it a bit of like a it was not only a cozy space but also a hot space since it was keeping all the heat in so it turns out the reason he didn't want to go back in his crate was because it was a little too toasty for his liking oh my god he just had an accident. It happens. I, although I don't know why it's happening already. He took him out an hour ago. I guess it happens. So what we ended up doing was actually getting him a little cooling pad, which we found on Amazon just to help keep him a little cooler. And after that, crate training was so easy because not only was the space cozy, but it was chill, he had his toys. And we also made it a space where he could retreat to you know, cool off and beat the heat. Because if he's out in the apartment, it's kind of it gets kind of hot in here in the middle of the day, but we would freeze his cooling pad and put it in his crate, which made his crate the best place to be. So we were a little inconsistent with crate training at first, I'm not gonna lie. Because it was really hot, we didn't want the poor little guy to overheat, so we would leave the door open, but he would end up sleeping in the X-Pen, which at first was fine, but when we got the cooling pad, I convinced my partner 
to commit to four days of crate training. And so we did four days. He cried for the first, I think, two or three. And then by day three or four, he was totally fine. And, and I'm just gonna consult my little dog log because I'm that dog mom. That 100%, 100% I have a dog log, I gotta know. We had about two days of a little bit of crying, and then if he cried, we would just take him downstairs and go to the bathroom. Even if he didn't have to go, we just wanted to create that association of whining equals bathroom. And then on the third day, no crying. And on the fourth day, no crying. And you're raising a tiny little puppy. Moments like that give you so much pride. <laughs> and now, he crying. Um, when you're raising a tiny little puppy, moments like that give you so much pride because you're like, I did it, he's, you know, <laughs> he's, he's acting the way you want him to, he's being quiet, this is great. So now he sleeps in his crate every night with the door closed, we have no issues with crying. The only time he whines is if he wants to go out or if he's feeling lonely or if he's hungry or if he's too hot. Another question I got was, I'm answering like a lot of the questions that I got on Instagram just within the video, so there's not gonna really be a Q&A format. I'm just answering them as they come to mind and then folding them into the entirety of the video. But another question that I got was what style of training that we're gonna be doing with him. And when we were researching sight hounds and also talking to the breeder, she did really emphasize the fact that they are such a soft creature. They like their soft spaces, being around their people, they love love, um, and they don't really respond too well to negativity. I don't know any breed of dog that does respond well to negativity and a harsh tone, but so we're going with a lot of positive reinforcement. We don't punish Mars, we don't yell at him, we try not to use like a harsh tone. Sometimes if he sneaks into the bedroom, I'll hit him with a like, a little get out of here. But for the most part, everything's really um, light and soft and positive. When we first got him, he did have a little potty break on our um, on our carpet and that's when we were learning about you know how puppies relate to their space and if they have too much space they don't really know how to treat it and so they'll treat it like they're outside or they just don't respect it as much as they do their crate because they'll never go to the bathroom in their crate and so you want them to view your apartment with that same level of so you want them to think about your apartment the same way as they do their crate um, but if you give them too much space too fast they don't really associate it with um, their home space so they'll go to the bathroom and you know do all that behavior that you don't really want to encourage so he did have a bathroom break and it wasn't an issue at all I took him outside my partner cleaned the spot there was no like rubbing his nose in it no yelling at him because it's honestly our job to make sure that we're setting him up for success and we failed him in that scenario and we don't want to do that so so we learn from that one and we move on. Um, what's really big for us is like positive leash manners, not jumping up on people, not barking, um, and then also not nipping. That's something that's coming up right now. He is teething, but he's also starting to nip a little bit, which is normal for puppies his size. But we just wanna make sure that we're not engaging with that behavior. And oh my God, I sound like such a mom. We just wanna make sure that we're not engaging in that nippy behavior. And if he starts to nip at us, you know, playtime's over. We do have him enrolled in puppy classes. We're waiting for him to get his second set of shots later this month before we take him in since he is at risk of getting the parvo virus from the other puppies. And like literally everything, parvo is everywhere, <laughs> can be everywhere. Um, so yeah, we're being really diligent about taking him out because puppies can get parvo from so many things. There's like, they can get it from grass. It lives on the ground for up to seven months. They get it from sniffing other dogs, like bathroom breaks. And so there is so much risk for this little guy. So we're trying to be really diligent with where we take him. No grass, all concrete, short walks. It'll be really exciting and a good chance to get him socialized. Since that's something that's also very important. There is so much to think about when you get a little puppy and you want to make sure that you raise them to be a well-rounded adult doggo. So I think that's all I have to share for this video. It's been a little long. I really did want to keep this video 
like a short intro, but I also wanted to update you guys on what the first two weeks has been like. It's been a huge knowledge overload. We went from feeding him high quality kibble to a raw food diet, and now we've got like chicken necks, venison, my parents, my dad hunts, so they sent over some elk meat. So we got the boy all kitted out with everything a growing puppy needs and we've been taking him to the vet every week to get him weighed. He started out at eight and a half pounds and he's gained almost two pounds, which we're very excited about. And he's also grown from, from what we've kept track of. He grew about four inches in a week. That seems like a lot, but I mean, looking at him and then remembering how he was when we first picked him up, he's definitely getting bigger and I can't stop taking pictures of him because I want to remember him being this tiny forever. So raising a puppy in an apartment definitely added a layer of complexity to the situation because when they're puppies they have to go to the bathroom so often. Our main concern was not being able to get him out in time for him to be able to use the bathroom. So we were afraid that you know we'd have to be waiting for the elevator, he'd end up peeing on someone, peeing on the carpet, peeing in the elevator, basically just peeing everywhere. And so we set up a really intense pee schedule before we even got Mars that had us taking him out every two hours. So from waking up in the morning for his first pee at six, you know, he'd go out again at um, eight, uh, 10, 12, and then <laughs> two, four, six, etc. When we actually got Mars, we stuck to the schedule. We were taking him out that often, but he didn't really have to go. So we started to space it out a little bit more just to find like what would be a good schedule for him. Because to us, like going outside every time is a risk for him to like catch something, whether it's so we were actually really lucky because potty training this little guy was easier than we thought it would be. I mean, he's only had the one accident on the carpet, and then he like had randomly two today. But hey, don't eat that. Eat this. If you're getting a puppy while you're living in an apartment, expect to be taking them out every two or so hours, especially if they're smaller and have a smaller bladder. With Mars, we got really lucky. He's good for like four or five hours, so we weren't having to take him out as much, which has been great. Um, the only other concern we had was noise level, and he's not that much of a barker, which was something that we actually, and this is something that I didn't touch on earlier. The breeder that we went with is super into matching her puppies with people and their lifestyles so that it's the best possible fit that it could be. So when we met her, she talked to us about, you know, where we lived, what we did for work, what our lifestyle was like. And I think she did such a good job at matching us with Mars because he is not a big barker. The only time he's really barking right now is when we're playing. And apparently that's his shelfy side coming out. <laughs> But that was our only other concern for living in an apartment and raising a puppy in an apartment. What we ended up doing was talking to our neighbors before we brought Mars home and letting them know that you know we're getting a puppy, he might be a little barky, and you know we apologize in advance. Those, I think, were the two main concerns we had about raising Mars in the apartment, noise and potty training, and they've both been a lot easier and more of a positive experience than we were expecting. So I don't really have any horror stories for you guys, just positive feedback from our experience. So I, that's actually it that I have for this video on Mars. I did want to keep this video short and sweet. He does have an Instagram. I'll leave it in the description box down below. It is Mars the Spray. if you want to follow him. I post tons of cute puppy photos and videos. And if you want me to make a Mars video part two, leave me some questions or topics in the comments down below. And I would love to talk about those with you guys. So, <sighs> Mars, you want to come say goodbye? Hey Mars, come say goodbye to the people, come say goodbye. So that is it um, from me for this video. I hope you guys loved meeting Mars. And if you want me to make a Mars video part two, leave me some questions or topics in the comments down below. Um, he has expensive taste. And we will see you in the next video.